Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And of course, Jesus is that light of life. Uh, this Bible study is going to be on, eh, what am I going to call it? Uh, I guess you could call it the kingdom of the beast. The beast system is going to be three parts. It's going to be economic. After all, you're going to have to have 666 or you won't be able to buy or sell. It's going to be religious. You will either worship the beast or the image of the beast or they will kill you and it's going to be a government well there's going to be a government aspect of it a militarily uh, a military type government and because the bible says the people will be asking who can make war with the beast so with that in mind Let's get going. Now, how did we get into this situation? Well, the Bible tells you how to run a government. It's clearly laid out in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The uh, Bible says that a murderer should be put to death in the mouth of two or three witnesses. No. We don't want to do that today. Uh, no, we're going to do, you know, well, he was guilty by reason of insanity. So we're going to, you know, put him in a prison for the rest of his life and feed him. Uh, which is the definition of insanity. Bible says rapists should be put to death. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, we don't want to do that. You know, people will say that God's laws are, well, you know, oh, we can't have a, a theocracy, but, you know, which is a, a God's ruling of kingdom and his laws. But we can have man's laws, no problem. So, I mean, the Bible actually says that uh, when, mur you know, murderers or capital crime Capital criminals, they were be they were to be put to death before the sun set. So if you caught them in the morning, you're supposed to catch, kill them before the sun even set. But you had to be 100% sure. And the deal was, if those who were testifying against that person were caught to be liars, whatever the penalty was applied to the liars, the perjury people. So if they were trying to put somebody to death and you found out they were lying, you put them to death. So, you know, it would be very less likely that people would lie if they knew that they were going to be put to death if they got caught. You know, <laughs> very, very unlikely. So you want God's government or do you want man's government? Well, we've rejected God's government. So, so how did we get into this situation? Well, let's go to the economic part first, I guess. God's law says to use gold and silver as money. People don't necessarily know it, but a pound, uh, a pound, a British pound, was to be a pound of sterling silver. You ever heard of a pound sterling? That's what it was. 12 troy ounces of sterling silver. A dollar. A dollar was one ounce of 90% pure silver. Yeah, that's the legal definition of a dollar. But the evil ones, uh, through bribery of greedy politicians and royalty, perhaps through murder and 
blackmail and any other thing that they can evil thing they can think up had the people the politicians or royalty give control of the money to the you know who's the banks where they exchanged our gold and silver for little pieces of paper with pictures of kings and queens or presidents on it. And paper is just, you know, intrinsically it's worthless. I mean, people are using it, but intrinsically it is worthless. There's no, there's no value to a piece of paper other than a collectible. You know, you might have people that like Civil War money of the South, but it's only collector's value. There's no gold, there's no silver. So they've collected all the gold and silver and uh, exchange it for pieces of paper of which one day the economic system will have to collapse because paper money, you can just print it until it's worthless. And whoever's in control of the printing of the money can use that money to purchase anything of value. They can use it to purchase up all the news outlets, TV stations, radio, newspapers, magazines. They can purchase all of them. And then there's, you know, they, they can use it to buy up the uh, internet people. They can use it to buy basically everything of value. So there will be no dissenting voices. Everything will speak as one voice, the voice of the beast. Matter of fact, um, have you ever heard of the golden rule? Armin, no, no, not the golden rule that Jesus said, you know, do unto others as they would have uh, do unto you, as you would have others do unto you, you know? No, 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 Armin Hammer. His family was, uh, if I remember correctly, his family or he was the creator, uh, the founder of the Communist Party USA. Yeah, if I remember correctly. But he said, he that has the gold makes the rules. Well, like I said, they took all the, uh, they took all the gold out and silver out of circulation the gold they took out in 1934, the silver they took out in 1964, and they replaced it with little pieces of paper. So, the golden rule, they have all the gold, and they're making all the rules. So, there you go. And like I mentioned, uh, wealth in the Bible was gold, silver, livestock, which the um, governments are starting to want to get rid of. Well, they want to get rid of livestock. Uh, I mean, don't you know that cow farts create global warming? And we're all doomed. We're going to die of global warming, they tell us. Of course, in the 70s, I remember every week on the television, uh, they were crying about the coming global catastrophe of the Ice Age. It was the ice age. Now it's global warming and then, you know, I mean, climate change or whatever, you know. But seriously, in the 70s, every week, it was a program on the coming ice age. We're all going to die because of the ice age coming. Florida's going to turn into an iceberg. And we're not going to be able to grow food. And we're going to starve and freeze every stinking week. Um... I think it was Mark Twain that said that it's a good thing for politicians that people have very short memories. Yeah. So, the evil rulers that control this world, well, technically God does, but he's allowing it because we don't want God and his laws. You know, I mean, I can have a uh, LBGT, uh, how would I say this, uh, in the elementary 
school and story time, you know. But uh, God forbid you have Bible reading, you know. Oh, you can't have that. No, that we got to have separation of church and state. Well, that only applies for the evil ones wanting to keep Christ out of the state. But I'll guarantee you when the beast appears, there is not going to be a separation of the Satanism and the state. They're going to be one and the same. But the, um, so basically, uh, let's see, yeah, gold, silver, livestock, and land. And they want to make sure that, uh, well, let's just say under communism, there was no private property. I mean, the rulers controlled everything, but you were not allowed to own anything. I mean, you didn't even own the clothes on your back. They were given to you by the state. And, uh, you know, if you were work the land and grow a bunch of food, and then one day a bunch of armed soldiers in a truck show up and at gunpoint decide to take all your food that you worked all summer for, too bad, so sad. And of course, the fat cats at the top would uh, enjoy all the food that you grew, you know. But let's take a look at the uh, economic system of the beast. And by the way, through their stealing of all the wealth of all the Western countries with their paper money, they were able to bribe all, virtually all the clergy, so-called. And, uh, I mean, almost everybody works for the beast. Almost everybody. So, what can I tell you? And if you want to get on TV and preach, well, you got to be a servant of the beast. Now, let's define some terms. Um, I'm going to try to prove that Antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is all referring to the same entity. Now, there is more than one Antichrist. I mean, anybody that denies Jesus as the Christ is Antichrist. And there's millions of them. Millions of them. But there is going to be a man of sin, son of perdition, the Bible calls, that John calls in the book of Revelation, the beast. So, let's take a look. Um, let's see. In second chapter of John, first chap, uh, second John, second book of John, Chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Boy, that's an understatement. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. What do you mean that Jesus Christ is, you know, uh, confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? 1 Timothy 3.16 God was manifest in the flesh. Everybody that's born of a woman is come in the flesh. So how can you, you know, how can you say that Jesus has not come in the flesh? This is in reference to God the Son coming in the flesh. But that's a whole nother Bible study. But that's what it's referring to. So let's go to 1 John 4 and verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is, the, this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it 
in the world. So there you go. Uh, -do okay, let's go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, uh, singular, even now are there many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. Hmm. Let's skip to verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Is there a religious group that denies that Jesus is the Christ? Call around. And uh, all your non-Christian religions and ask them, hey, is Jesus the Christ? And if they say, no, absolutely not, otherwise we'd be Christians, uh, you'll know who they are. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. You ever heard a preacher say, oh, there's a certain group that have a covenant with the Father, but they just don't accept the Son yet. But they will. During the tribulation, they'll all get saved. Wee! Because the church is going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture. I don't think so. No. Bible teaches if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. Because the Father sent the Son. Period. So, all right, let's take a look at uh, the man of sin. Now, I did a video on the son of perdition. In John chapter 17 and verse 12, Jesus says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, you know, who God the Father gave the Son, those that thou gavest me I've kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus said, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? And of course, he's speaking of Judas Iscariot. What does perdition mean? It means to fall. So, Judas is called the son of perdition. But there's going to be another one. Oh, yeah. So let's go to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about the second coming. And by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. In Matthew 24, Jesus warned over and over and over and over and over. He said, be not deceived. The, man of, the, the evil one comes before Christ. Tell that to your Baptist church, pre-trib rapture Baptist churches. They don't believe that. They make Jesus a liar. Let no man deceive you by any means. Not your mother, not your preacher, not the man of sin. No. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Uh, would you say that the West is uh, falling away? I mean, when you got uh, men marrying men and abortion is legal, I mean, you think that would have happened in 1950? No. No, it wouldn't have happened in 1950. You know, in the last 70 years, Look at how much things have changed. 
For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. There's going to be a man of sin that's going to be revealed. The son of perdition to fall. Judas was the first. He is the role model, well, well the model, I guess you could say, or the foreshadow for the second man of sin, son of perdition. And what's this one going to do? Who opposeth and exalteth himself. So he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Hmm. So that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So if this didn't happen 2,000 years ago, approximately, give or take a few years, if this didn't happen back when the temple was around, that the Romans destroyed in 70 AD, then it's going to happen again. There's going to be a new temple have to be built for this to be fulfilled. And people will tell you, oh, that happened in 70 AD. It was a Roman emperor. I mean, not the Roman emperor, but uh, General Titus. He sat in the temple of God saying that he was God to be worshipped. Um, what do you think the emperor of Rome would have said if a mere Roman general sat in the temple of God proclaiming that he's God and that the Roman emperor is going to have to worship this general? I don't think so. And besides, General Titus was, his father was a Roman emperor. <laughs> Did you know that on the same exact, uh, at the anniversary of the same exact date, the Babylonians destroyed the temple in the sack of Jerusalem, and the Romans did the same thing on the same exact day, on the same date. What are the chances of that? Uh, the chances of both of those events happening on the same exact numerical day is like multiplying 360 times 360 or 365, if you will, 0.25 or 0.24 or whatever it is. I would say those are some astronomical odds, if you ask me. Or is it just a coincidence? Or was God's hand on it all along giving the you-know-whos a message? I just calculated the odds of that happening both of uh, Jerusalem being destroyed on the same day. The odds are 1 in 129,000. And I'm being conservative. <laughs> one chance in 129,000. You got a better chance of uh, winning a scratch off at the lottery. And winning, yeah, well, yeah, you get the idea. I don't know. Now, if you want to pause right here and read Revelation 13, it talks about the beast. Uh, the word beast appears in Revelation 13, wow, how many times? About a dozen times. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, you know, so as far as I believe, I believe the Antichrist, the singular Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, are just different names for the same entity, even though there are many Antichrists. Uh, there's a little country over in the Middle East that's absolutely full of Antichrists. Oh, yeah. And all governmental, governmental leaders. And one of the things Jesus uh, healed people of, maybe more than anything else, was being possessed of devils, d you know, demons, demonic possession. You got to realize any unsaved person 
could be possessed of a devil. I don't know how true it is, but a newspaper did a poll when Bill Clinton was running for president, and uh, as if voting makes a difference. But uh, they asked some women, uh, who'd you vote for? And they said, oh, well, I voted for Bill Clinton because he's better looking than the other guy. I don't know how true that is. I mean, you know, they lie about everything, but yeah, you get the idea. So, all right, so let's take a look at uh, the economic aspect of the beast system. All right, so Revelation 13 is going to be our thing here. Verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And uh, you read, if you read the Jehovah's Witnesses literature, they'll show something that looks like Godzilla rising up out of the ocean. I can't do that. Uh, I, I can't make Godzilla's noise, you know. But yeah, that's what they want you to think. A beast rising up out of the sea. Well, we're not talking about an animal. We're talking about the son of perdition, the man of sin, the Antichrist. It's just, Bible's full of figures of speech. When you hear people say, well, the Bible's symbolic. No, the Bible's literal. It's both. It's both. You just got to know which is which. You know, when John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He's talking about Jesus, not a four-legged creature that goes, bah! Now, in Revelation 17, you want to know what the beast that rises up out of the sea, where that is? Well, go to Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters, waters, you know, wet water, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The beast that's rising up out of the sea, which is water, where the whore sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So let's go back to Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now remember, Christ is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. But this beast is going to speak like He's uh, like the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's not. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon. Hmm, who's this dragon? Well, who is this dragon? Uh, well, Revelation chapter 9. Now, the King James Bible will interpret and explain the King James Bible if you let it. The modern versions change the words so that you don't make the connections between words and phrases. And they do that on purpose. But in Revelation 12 and verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out. From where? Cast out of heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, and that's devil, which is the word evil with a capital D, the devil, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, and his angels were cast out with him. Wow, the devil has angels. Did you know that? Yeah, he does, a lot, a third of them. So, the great dragon, the old serpent, 
is the devil and Satan. And he deceives the whole world. And there you go. All right. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the dragon gave him, the beast, his power and his seat and great authority. What do you mean his seat? The throne of Satan. Yeah. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So evidently, this is going to be something that should have caused death. But it's going to be a deadly wound. If something's deadly, that means, well, the first four words. I mean, the first four letters of this world. Deadly. D-E-A-D. -E dead. But the deadly, dead, Lee wounds going to be healed and all the world wondered after the beast well yeah a guy gosh the beat this guy should have died but he didn't and they worshiped the dragon see it's going to be a religious kingdom but we're not quite there yet and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him who can fight the beast? Uh, not you, not me, not any military on this earth. Only Christ. But we're going to get more of that, more of this military and government stuff and religious uh, later. This might be a three-parter. I don't know. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. Uh, this is basically three and a half years. It's mentioned in uh, Daniel and it's mentioned in other places in Revelation. Um, 40 and two months. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. It's going to look like this guy is the real deal. Christians are going to get their literal and figuratively their butts whipped, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah war with the saints and to overcome them it's gonna look bad and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world did you know that believers names were written in the book of life of the Lamb from the foundation of the world. Ooh, that sounds like election and Calvinism, Chaplain Bob. That's not real. See, there's people who say, oh, you just say a little sinner's prayer and God writes your name in the book of life. Uh, that's not how I read this. There are people's names written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, and then there are names that are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Of course, there's another way of looking at it too. You could say, well, Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. From the time the Lord created the earth or a few seconds before or a few seconds after or whatever time period you want to attribute, Christ was to die for the world even before it fell. Christ was already the lamb that was going to die for the sins of his people. So that's my opinion. And I'm that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So if we're supposed to go into captivity to be killed and martyred, for our faith in Christ, we're supposed to go willingly. 
If they want to kill you because of the color of your skin, well, uh, Jesus told his disciples to buy a sword. Oh yeah, in the garden, sure did. And, uh, you know, but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be led into captivity. But if they want to kill you for Christ and you fight them to prevent going, well, this applies to you. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Now, if you read Matthew 24, you will know that the Lord warns his people that they would be taken before councils and in the synagogues to be tried and put to death. And I'm paraphrasing. If you want, read Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13. All right, so let's uh, keep reading here. Verse 11. Now, something I want to point out. They want to go to digital cash. 666, Mark of the Beast. Perhaps you've heard of that. What would be the advantages that the world can tell us why digital cash would be good? Well, paper money is dirty. Ooh, did you know COVID can be spread by cash, paper money? So we got to get rid of it to keep the spread of COVID, shouldn't we? Yeah. And... Uh, you know, tax evaders, why they want to deal with cash, right? They don't pay their fair share. Never mind that the ultra-rich never pay any taxes. They, they don't pay taxes. Uh, the waitress working at a restaurant, she's the one that pays taxes, not the ultra-wealthy, you know. But, uh, you know... Uh, what else? Well, how about the underground economy? Drug dealers, beware. If everybody went to digital cash, how are you going to buy drugs? Hmm. Good question. Or how are you going to sell drugs or buy them? You know, be a lot harder, right? Yeah. So actually, it'll... Uh, It'll be a good thing because we can stop all those illegal activities. Everybody will pay their fair share and there won't be spreading that dirty, disease-ridden cash in an epidemic. Yeah, digital currency, that's a good thing, ain't it? That's what they're going to tell us. Verse 11, Revelation chapter 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Oh yeah, he's going to sound like the lamb of God, the Savior. And he spake as a dragon. And we know the dragon is the devil and Satan. So he's going to pretend to be the lamb of God, but he's going to be the devil. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power, power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Hmm. So there's going to be a religious aspect. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, miracles. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is exactly what Elijah did. And I got an hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah. And I go into this kind of stuff. And what do you want to bet that one of the, the, the guy doing this claims to be Elijah? Elijah did this in the Old Testament when he confronted evil King Ahab and his wicked queen Jezebel and the prophets of all. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
you know what? He's going to be able to burn up the anybody that opposes this beast is going to be burned up with fire come down from heaven. You think people are going to oppose this being? I don't think so. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Oh, you don't want to worship the image of the beast? What does the Bible say about bowing down to idols and worshiping them? in the Ten Commandments in case you uh, you want to know yeah God would never ask his people to worship an idol and that's exactly what this beast is doing anybody that's bothered to read the Ten Commandments is gonna know that this is a this is not of God period and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Remember King Nebuchadnezzar made that golden image? And anybody that wouldn't worship the image was killed? Or was, you know. And then you had the three Hebrew children. Well, men. They weren't children. They were men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They wouldn't do it. They were thrown into the furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar saw four people walking around in there. Uh, wait a minute, didn't we throw three guys in there? But I see a fourth one. What's what's up with that, big dog? Yeah. Yep, Nebuchadnezzar, man. He uh he learned a lesson. Verse 16. And he, the beast, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Economic people, and that no man, no woman, no child, and that no man might buy or sell, no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. When you look up the Greek, mark, it means it could have meaning uh, reference to like a branding or a tattoo or something like that I mean what happened in the Old West when some people had a cattle ranch they would take a hot iron with a brand and brand the cattle with their mark hey that cattle belongs to me it's got my brand on it same principle here. You're going to have to take the mark or the name or the number of the name of the beast. And if you don't have it, you ain't going to buy, you ain't going to sell, you ain't going to eat. Not in the grocery store anyway. It's economic, people. Economic. It's going to be military. It's going to be religious. Boom. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. What day was Adam created on? Formed of, from the earth, where the Lord breathed uh, the breath of life into him? Day six. Six is the number of a man. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beasts, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six hundred, sixty and six. Six, six, six. Yeah. It's going to be economic, people. 
And that's how they're going to sell us on digital currency. Hey, no more spreading of COVID with your cash. I don't want your COVID cash. I want, uh, you know, digital currency. Now you got a smart card, credit card, ATM card, debit card, whatever you want to call it. Hey, you know, a lot of states have chips in their driver's licenses. Passports have got chips. Your bank cards have got chips. Why should we have all these different chips? Why don't we just get one chip and stick it in the forehead or in the hand? Yeah, it ain't going to be a barcode tattoo on your hand. That ain't going to happen. That's the enemy telling you that garbage. Yeah, they claim to be Christian, but they're not. They're the devil's kids. So the Bible says that wealth is gold, silver, land, and cattle. But those running this present evil wicked world will say, oh, it's uh, digital credits controlled by the banks and the government. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it makes me real confident, doesn't it? You know? So, uh, where have I heard this before? You will own nothing and you'll be happy or else. Karl Marx said that communism can be summed up in one sentence. No private property. The state and those that run the state control everything. You don't even own your own life. They control it. They own you. I think it was uh, George Carlin, the so-called comedian. He said, you have owners. They own you. Of course, he was one of them, or he wouldn't wouldn't have made, you know, he wouldn't, you would you won't be popular unless you're one of them. Doesn't happen. So, all right, so I've given you a overview of the religious and military government types, aspects of the coming kingdom of the beast, but it is definitely economic and there will be no escaping it unless the Lord gives it to you. Now, something I should point out that I'll cover more later, I'm planning on anyways. In Revelation 12, it says the woman, the church, of course, the demon nominational preachers will tell you, oh no, that's the, you know who's, they're God's chosen people. I don't think so, but that's what they say. But in Revelation 12, it says that the woman, the church, will fly into the wilderness to escape the beast, the serpent. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. But I honestly do believe that the Lord is going to provide not only a place, but provisions, water to drink, and manna from heaven to eat, just like he did with the children of Israel in the Exodus under Moses, I think it's going to happen again. Because the Old Testament is a foreshadow of things to come in the New Testament. And if you want to know how things, God's going to do things in the future, look to the past. He doesn't change. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change the plan. You know, it just doesn't work like that. At least, not that I can see. And if I'm teaching falsely, may the Lord forgive me, because I don't do it intentionally. I mean, I don't claim to be right about everything, but, you know, I, at least I'm not trying to intentionally deceive people like uh, a lot of your TV preachers do. Well, maybe they don't know they're being deceitful, but uh, even so, they're being the the Lord would be blinding their eyes. Uh, Kent Hovind, somebody I really respected as far as the uh, teaching of evolution versus creation. He was a creationist. 
he made evolutionists look really stupid. So the government had to trump up some charges against him, uh, put him in jail for almost 10 years for, uh, for spending his own money. Yeah, that's, they call him a tax evader, but he wasn't. That's what they tell you, because they don't want you to know the real reason why they uh, had him sentenced uh, under a thing called structuring. Structuring is uh, basically spending your own money. For example, if you took, uh, if you withdrew or deposited more than $10,000 in cash, the banks are required by federal law to submit a notice to the government that you did so. But if you took $9,500, or let's say $9,999.99, one penny short of 10000 well, then they, they wouldn't be required by law to submit the notice to the government, I think the IRS, that you were, you know, over 10000 or over, or, you know, deposited or being withdrawn. But then there's another law that kicks in called structuring. And they say, oh, you're trying to evade telling the government of the $10,000 you're trying to withdraw or deposit into the bank. And that's a federal crime, a felony. And he spent nine and a half years in prison for spending his own money because they were all, all the withdrawals were under $10,000. Yeah. But they say he was, you know, evading taxes, which is a lie. But they had to do that to shut him up. And, um, his own kid turned against him, uh, did his best to steal the ministry from him, and his wife divorced him and left him, and uh, they wouldn't even let him, they wouldn't even let Kent live in his, his own house that he paid for, that he bought and paid for. I mean, talk about suffering for Christ. I mean, your kids and your wife turns against you, spend nine and a half years in prison and instead of coming home to a family they boot you out of the house that you lived in that you paid for boy i'll tell you what but the thing what one good thing came about that is that kent when he was in prison he started studying the bible he had a lot of time right i mean what else is there to do in prison and um He started reading the Bible by himself and saying, wait a minute, where's this pre-trib rapture? Everything I keep reading shows the tribulation happens and at the end of it, the church gets taken up when Christ is returning. I don't see the pre-trib rapture anywhere. So he discovered that the pre-trib rapture was a lie after having been taught that all his life, virtually. Well, guess what? All those wonderful Baptist churches that always telling them, oh, Brother Hoven, we love you, Brother Hoven. Come come preach at our church. Because they knew that every time Kent Hoven showed up at a church, the church was packed solid, standing room only, and they could pass that collection plate around. Oh, we love you, Brother Hoven. Because he, he was, he, he would make fun of evolutionists and he would tell jokes and the guy was really great in a lot of ways. But as soon as he started preaching, there is no pre-trib rapture. All those Baptist churches that said, we love your brother, told him, you're a heretic, we don't want you in our church. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. There's not many people that have suffered more than what Kent suffered for the gospel. So, boy, I'll tell you what. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of people that attend church that are going to be uh, meeting the lake of fire on a personal level. A lot of them. I just, oof. And I was just as worthy... To meet the same fate, except for by the grace of Christ, 
You know, I look back at my life and there was times I should have died. And I was an unbeliever, heretic, the whole, you know, well, maybe not a heretic, but I did everything contrary to what the Bible said. But I can look back and realize that the Lord was protecting me even when I didn't even know him. What does the book say? Well, in 1 John chapter 4, and verse 19, we read, We love him, the Lord, we love him because he first loved us. The Lord was protecting me even though I realize I didn't deserve it. And here we are today. Seriously, I OD'd at least once, maybe more than that. And I should have died a couple of times, but the Lord, he's probably like, I got other plans for you, Bob. And I haven't been faithful, trust me. But we're going to close this out with Revelation 1 and verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And for that I say, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.